So in my last video, I was using Cloudflare to protect my icongenerateai.com application. But a lot of you pointed out that the stuff I was doing, there's actually an easier way to do it if you just use something called Cloudflare Tunnels. So that's kind of what I'm going to talk about in this video and how I got that set up. But first, let's dive into a diagram to actually understand what a Cloudflare Tunnel is. So let's have a user over here. And that user is going to make a request to your domain. And right now I have Cloudflare set up in front of my VPS. So a user technically would do the DNS lookup that'll point them to Cloudflare. Cloudflare is going to basically point that request to my DigitalOcean droplet over here. So I'll just go ahead and say like VPS DigitalOcean that has Next.js running on it inside of a Docker container on port, I don't know, 3000. So this works well, but there is an issue. Um, if you don't secure this DigitalOcean droplet, basically anyone can still come in here and just make requests to directly your DigitalOcean machine, and they could just run up your DigitalOcean bandwidth bills, et cetera. So you definitely want to still have like rate limiting set up inside of this box. So what I ended up needing to do was Cloudflare has a list of IP addresses that you can actually add to the firewall. So over here, if I do like a firewall, so DigitalOcean has the ability to create a firewall and you can provide a list of IP addresses. So like I can say I only want access on HTTP or TCP or UDP on certain IP addresses and blocks. And so what that allows you to do is basically Cloudflare has a list of these IPs and you can set this up inside your VPS directly or you can just use the feature that DigitalOcean provides. And that's basically going to prevent anyone from just directly accessing your machine because you're saying, hey, I only want traffic to only come from Cloudflare, right? So that kind of further protects your machine. But if you're hosting this on somewhere else, like for example, I was trying to move my stuff to Railway because I just find it easier to have everything in one place. And Railway has a, a budget limit where they'll turn off all your services when you hit a certain spending budget. I didn't see that in DigitalOcean. Um, they have alerts and alarms that send you an email. But like I mentioned before, when I was sleeping, I got the email and then I didn't see that the spinning happened until after I woke up. And by that time, there's already a lot of charges. So now let's segue into Cloudflare tunnels. So instead of having to deploy something and having like a firewall set up, you can actually say that there's going to be absolutely no public access to this machine. And instead, you're going to be using something called a tunnel. So what a tunnel is, is basically like an internal proxy or like router that's living inside your VPS. And that is going to route traffic to whatever is inside your VPS that you need, right? So for example, this will be my Next.js. And I believe they call it Cloud Flared is like the tool that you run. So now I don't even have to worry about setting up public access at all. This machine has absolutely no public access. And the only way that traffic can come into this machine is by using this tunnel. That's basically the concept. And then I'll walk you through how I got it set up with Railway. Again, I'm just using Railway because I just like their service. So if we go to Cloudflare, down here, there's a zero trust link. You can click it. And I do believe you have to like create a different Cloudflare account to get this set up. But once you do have it set up, you can go into something called tunnels here. So let's click tunnels. And then I'm going to dive into web dev. Cody. And once you're setting up this tunnel, they're going to give you a token, which I'm not going to show you, but basically you click on this and you can use that token to set it up inside of Railway. Or if you're trying to get this set up on like a Windows machine or Debian, Docker, you can do that as well. They have information about how to do that. So basically you first create the tunnel and then I went into Railway to my Web Dev Cody project. And if you go over here to the templates, they actually have a Cloudflare tunnel template where you can paste in that token and that is going to basically set up that tunnel for you, like I showed in this diagram, where it's going to load up this Cloudflare thing. It's going to give the token inside that running Docker container. And all the traffic coming in is going to go through this. So secondly, let's go into the Web Dev Cody application. You'll notice that inside of networking, I have no public access at all. This is just a private container that's running. But Railway gives you an internal domain, right? So you can kind of grab this host name here. And that's what we're going to use to set up our tunnel. So let's go back to tunnels. I'm going to go to public host name. And notice if I click on webdevcody.com and go to edit, you'll see that same host name printed here. Now, you do have to change it to HTTP. And you have to specify what port your Next.js application is going to run on. So in our case, I had to go into the variables. And I needed to hard code the port to be 3000. And so that's basically setting up this tunnel, saying when you hit a certain domain, route to this process that's running on port 3000, which is my Next.js application. So now if I go to Web Dev Cody, you'll notice that the traffic is all working as it did before. 
that is about it for tunnels. Now I do plan to look more into um, some of the Cloudflare services they provide, such as R2. Right now I'm storing all of my icons for the icon generator inside of a S3 bucket. But that is one of the reasons why I got charged so much is because of the egress in the bandwidth charges of people downloading those images. So Cloudflare has a service that's similar to S3 called R2, but there's no egress fees with that. So basically people can download your assets and not be charged. Um, I, now there's probably some fine print saying that at a certain point you will be charged, but I thought that was pretty cool. So that's the next thing I plan to kind of look into because after that whole DDoS happened, my final AWS bill ended up reaching almost $1,500 because I'm dumb and I had the bucket as public, I would say I learned quite a lot from uh, this little incident. And luckily, AWS said they're going to refund this. They have already refunded like 1,200 of it. I just have like a couple like 200 left over, which I'll be fine, honestly, if they don't refund. But they said they will. But the main thing I learned from this is that even if you're working on a small side project and you don't really have that many users, you should still think about the best ways to secure it in case someone tries to abuse your system just for fun. So always set up some type of DDoS protection, always set up some type of rate limiting, make sure you have a CDN in front of everything so that you don't get charged as much for bandwidth, and then be very cautious about what you're using and what has access to the things that you're using because all it takes is for you to not be looking for a couple of hours when you go out to dinner or you're sleeping and you might have a giant bill because you didn't set up alerts. That's another thing that I think is very important as well that I didn't really think too hard about for side projects is having the ability to have a hard cap on spending because if you don't have alerts set up, for example, email alerts are okay, but not if you're away from your machine for a couple of hours. Basically having a hard cap that just turns off your domain or turns off your services or just delete stuff so that your charges will no longer incur when the DDoS is happening or someone's trying to like flood your system. So those are some of the things that you should probably keep in mind um, when you're hosting your little side projects. Even though you don't think that it will happen, it could still happen. So hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and learning a little bit about tunnels. I thought it was pretty cool, but I wanted to share this with you all as well. Other than that, let me know if there's another Cloudflare thing you want me to look into because I think it's a pretty cool service. Other than that, have a good day and happy coding.